Hi everyone, for today's video I'm going to be talking about my Chikohodo MKKO brush. Can you see how beautiful this is? It's so pretty, right? Now before I continue talking about this brush, I would like to give a huge thanks to Fuda Beauty because Fuda Beauty sent this brush over to me. I was actually so shocked when I got this because um, I actually ordered something from Fuda Beauty and when the package arrived at home, I thought that it was my order but it wasn't so when i actually removed um, the packaging and when i opened it it was actually this brush that i saw and i was so shocked like my jaw dropped to the floor and i was like oh, is this some kind of a mistake or something like that but um no it wasn't and actually for the beauty sent this over to me so thank you again for the beauty i feel the love domorigato i'm gonna try my very best not to make this video lengthy because there's so much to unpack um, with this brush and I'm also planning to compare this to my two other brushes from the Mackay series that I have in my possession So that's gonna be a little bit later in the video. So if you're guys interested in seeing um, the Chikohodo MKKO being compared to the Ume and the Cherry Blossom powder brush I'm gonna put a, a timestamp here so that you guys can just hop over to that part of the video. The Chikohodo MKKO powder brush actually came in a gold box like this. I love it when it comes in a box like this. It's make, it makes it much more special. And of course, you also have the Kumano Fuda seal and pamphlets from Chikohodo about the brush. The Chikohodo MKKO brush is actually a full head of gray squirrel. It's very soft. It's also quite dense. And the brush head design is actually rounded. You can actually feel how dense this brush head is by touching it here. And if you observe the brush, it actually doesn't flare out much. So this is actually a good brush to use if you want to apply a much more precise color on the cheek. And because this brush is quite dense and because it has some strength and resilience because of the density here at the base, it can actually have the ability of actually blending the color well into the cheek. So let's try that out. Okay, so I just want to do like a portion on my cheek. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to apply a layer of foundation so that we just have a nice even area on the face. I'm going to get my Chikohodo Ume powder brush and with my pressed powder here, I'm just going to set that part of my face so that we have an even texture. One thing that I appreciate about this brush is not only because of its shape, but because of its airy nature, I am able to use this brush for highly pigmented blushes. That Those blushes that, you know, upon first impact, it delivers like a very strong wash of color. And sometimes with the pigmentation, it's actually quite difficult to blend them out. So using this brush actually helps me to pick up the right amount of color color from the pan and then to apply it on the cheeks and also to layer it to the intensity that I want. For example, I have here my NARS Orgasm X blush. Now this blush is quite notorious in my opinion anyway to be like full impact of color. And I actually loaded the color here at the very tip of the brush. And what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to apply the colors on my cheek, building the color slowly into the intensity that I want. And because the brush head here is dense, it's actually enabling me to blend out the color well into my cheek. And just like that, I have now a very well blended color on my cheeks. It's still very soft, it's still very diffuse, and that's actually how I like to apply my blushes on the cheek. Now, so this is a powder brush, and if you see the brush head here, it's quite big, and it's actually, I think this is like two inches. And it's actually able to accommodate a large real estate on the face. So you can use this for powders, pressed powders, bronzers, blushers, but not for hard pressed powders because this is made of full squirrel hair. So it's very soft. So it will not have the ability to actually pick up the product from the pan. Okay, so let me just remove this. Now let's talk about the handle on this brush. Isn't it beautiful? It's so exquisitely done. And as you can see here, it has like two tones of pink and it's actually like, you know, lacquered to a matte finish, but I'm just so glad that it has some sheen and shine on the handle because it gives it a much more nicer dimension and life. Um, as you guys can see here, the artwork, it's actually that of a koi. So there are like three koi fishes here and um, the artist who made this artwork design is actually named Hideki Kimura. 
And I was so intrigued on who he was. And luckily for me, on the description for this brush on foodabeauty.com, there's actually a link there to Hideki Kimura's uh, website. So I was so intrigued. I clicked on it and I perused his website and I was so surprised on how well celebrated he actually was. Now, he's an amazing artist. He does paintings, he does murals, he does package design. He even made like the front cover of the Michelin Guide in 2018 for was it Kyoto and Osaka and Totori area? I'm just not too sure because I just perused through his website very, very fast. And you know, it was, his work is simply amazing. And I actually saw there, like, I think his trademark is that he actually likes to outline his artwork with gold paint and then he fills in the outline with the color that he wants or he works with the color of the background or of the surface that he's actually painting on so that's actually quite evident here on the artwork so that's actually incredibly amazing and that's also the main reason why this brush retails for 185 dollars because not only do you have a full head of gray squirrel here but chikahoto is also paying for the copyright to use his artwork on the handles of these brushes now if you are a food lover and you've been wondering for the longest time why there is a fish design on this brush handle because truthfully um, this is a very different brush handle design um, from the Mackay series of Chikohodo because all of the other brushes on the Mackay series of Chikohodo have flower designs on it. It is only this brush that differs from that and if you've been wondering what's the significance of this, I'll tell you why. Now firstly, from April 28 to May 5, there's this celebration in Japan called Golden Week. And this is the time wherein there are a series of bank holidays and national holidays right beside each other up until like I think it reaches the weekend and then it's also celebrated two days after the weekend. So this is when all of Japan goes on vacation. So as a side note, if you're planning to go to Japan at this time of the year in the future, try to avoid doing it. Reschedule because um, most of the spots in Japan are going to be closed and everything is going to be much more expensive because this is considered the high season. Now this Golden Week celebration actually culminates on May 5th, which is today, and they actually celebrate Children's Day today. So happy Children's Day to all of my friends in Japan watching. And on this day, most households in Japan actually attach wind socks with carp designs on a string and they tie this string on a pole and they lift this pole way on top of their homes and you can see all of this like carp wind socks drifting in the wind and they appear to be like swimming up the river and the significance of actually having these wind socks um, actually stems from a Chinese legend which actually um, encompasses Children's Day in Japan. So the story goes like this. There was actually a school of golden koi swimming up the Yellow River in China. Eventually, these koi reached a waterfall and some of the koi decided that, oh, I don't think we can go any further. So they swam back to where they came from. Well, there were some koi who were actually determined to swim up the waterfall to reach the very top. Now, now, while these koi were starting to swim up the waterfall, there were actually demons who saw this and you know what demons do, they make things much more difficult. So the demons actually magically extended the length of the waterfall and um, made it much more difficult. Eventually, there was one koi who actually reached the very top of the waterfall and there were actually gods watching these koi struggle to reach the very top. And what the gods did is that they actually blessed this golden koi, this single golden koi who was able to reach the very top and turned him or her into a golden dragon and you know he flew to heaven I think something like that. So this legend is actually the heart of this celebration because you know as parents they want their children to be very determined and to be very courageous and you know to be able to swim through life and to go through its struggles so they can become their very best and this is actually what this celebration is all about. Now the other significance is that the word koi is actually a homophone for love and affection. So this is also the other romantic side to that word. And lastly, the koi is actually a very beloved animal in Japan. They are bred and they are sold worldwide. And um, the main reason for this is because there are some people who actually believe that the koi brings in good luck, prosperity, and um, good fortune. And speaking of good fortune, do you know that the most expensive koi ever sold was at $1.8 million? So can you imagine 
how prosperous the owner of that koi become. So if you are someone who is into these things, like you know, you, you appreciate symbolism, you appreciate stories and legends, having a brush like this at your disposal and to use every day is actually a good talisman just for like, you know, good luck, prosperity, determination, also for love and affection. Speaking of luck, now that I have my Chikohodo MKKO brush with me, this completes my trifecta of maquillage brushes from Chikohodo. Now these are the three brushes that are currently in production um, from the maquillage series and I'm going to compare these together. So I'm going to flip my camera over because it's just going to be much more easier to talk and to compare about these brushes that way. All right, so these are my three brushes from the Maquillet line of Chikohodo. And now that they're side by side, can you guys see how exquisitely beautiful they are? I mean, they're so special, not only because we have like full gray squirrel hairs here on the brush head, but take a look at the handles. Can you imagine these are all handmade and this is like in the Maquillet lacquering technique. So it's very intricate and very time consuming. So if you're someone like me who doesn't have a collection of powder brushes yet you know this is a great way of actually adding them to your collection now I'm gonna compare these three briefly so that we just can see the difference so this is the Chikohodo MKUM plum brush now I did a review on this I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box so that you guys can see it now um, if you are gonna go check that out I would like to give my apology because I wrongly described this golden orb in the handle as a golden moon which i realized days after i made the video that this is actually the sun because in japanese art the moon is always um, colored silver so again i apologize for that so um yeah so yeah so this is the plum brush now of course what we have here in the middle is the star of the video the koi brush the mkko brush and then what we have here on the side this very beautiful brush as well is the mk2 or the cherry blossom powder brush so first i would like to compare the plum brush to the koi brush and if we just put them side by side you can instantly see that the bristles on the koi um, brush is longer than the plum brush and then although this is the case they're both dense but uh, but the koi brush is actually denser if you feel it here at the base you can actually feel how dense this brush head is in comparison to the plum brush this one is not so dense but even if their density levels are quite different they are both very airy so this these two will apply a very diffused amount of color on the face now um, the main difference also is that if we just tilt it over so we can also see that the brush head design is very different the plum brush here is actually more oval while the koi brush here is actually much more circular all right so now let's compare the koi to the cherry blossom powder brush now um, as you can see i think the cherry blossom brush here the handle is much more thicker than the koi but i think it's just only by a very minute difference and if we just line them up together you can already see the difference although it's a very small difference but the cherry blossom brush here actually flares out more than the koi brush and it almost flares out the same way the plum brush actually flares out and the cherry blossom brush kind of has like a paddle like design while this one doesn't again it's more erect so if we just again put them up we can see that the cherry blossom powder brush is again much more oval which is the same as that of the plum brush here while the koi brush is actually more round so this is the main difference of the koi brush the brush head is round um the main reason why i wanted to get the koi brush is because um while i was actually checking this out on the internet i wanted to designate this as a brush that i would use for blushes all right so i actually want to show you guys how these three different brush heads apply color now i'm not going to do it on my face so i'm going to do it on my arm and we have the aid here of my sailor moon color pop blush this is a matte color so that's going to be very good to use and i have my arm here so i actually added some foundation and powder so that we just have an even surface to apply the color so first what we're going to do is i'm going to use the chikahodo plum brush and i'm just going to load it at this part 
Next, we're going to use the Chikahodo Koi brush and we're going to load it here. And the next brush that we have here is a Cherry Blossom brush and we're going to load it here. Alright, so this is the main color payoff and difference that we see in this three brush head. So the plum brush will deliver a much more stronger color. The koi brush will deliver medium coverage or medium color payoff. And then the cherry blossom powder brush will deliver a much more lighter color. So in me saying that, so aside from the fact that you can use these brushes for powder application, may it be finishing powder, loose powder, bronzers, or whatever type of powders. And if you have blush products that are highly pigmented, and if you've tried using them on your face, and you know, you're just so surprised on how strong the color appears on your skin, maybe using any of the brushes here can help you apply a very well diffused color on the cheeks. And you know, depending on like the type of application or um, color payoff that you want to apply on your cheeks. Now, um, do take note that even if this is a very light application of color, you can actually build it. So you can just actually like, you know, continuously to build the color that you want to the intensity that you want. And even sometimes, you know, you can just like use these two brushes interchangeably so that it can help you to apply or get to the coverage or the color payoff that you want on your face. Now, I actually forgot to compare earlier the density of the Koi brush to the Cherry Blossom brush. Now, um, you can actually feel again how dense this brush here on the base in comparison to that of the Cherry Blossom brush. But then again, these two brushes have different brush head designs and they flare out very differently. So maybe that's why I can feel the Koi brush here to be quite dense. Now, if you guys, by the way, are interested to know more about the Cherry Blossom powder brush from Chico Holder, I'm gonna put a link down in the description box so that you guys can go and check it out for yourself. All right, so I guess that's it for me today. Now, if you guys have any more questions about the Chico Holder MKKO Koi brush, or the two other brushes from the Mackay series from Chico Odo and how I bought these three brushes from foodabeauty.com. Please leave them down in the comments box below and let's have a conversation about this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye-bye.